trust the police. I find they tend to be biased in favour of the innocent. We need a private detective. Miss Marple, then. Fortunately, she lives in the next village. Even more fortunate, the great Belgian detective, Hercule Poirot, happens to be staying the weekend with her. I must go and see them at once. Yes, do. Two great detectives for the price of one, eh? <laughs> Father couldn't be in better hands. <laughs> Lucky old dog. <laughs> Fallen on his feet again. <laughs> is rising. I fancy the sailors are in for a filthy night. Really? Yes, they've just opened a new strip club in Portsmouth. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Marbles. It has almost slipped my memory. What do you make of this? Doesn't go with your shoes, Mr. Poirot. <laughs> my name is not Mrs. Marbles. It's Miss Marple. I pray you, madam, do not digress. This bag was left behind by a visitor while we were out buying you some more wool. What can you tell me of its owner? Aside from the fact that she was a, a bald, fat woman named Hyde who wiped her nose upon her sleeve and whose husband wore a truss. <laughs> oh, really, Mr. Poirot, that's pure conjecture. Simplicity itself, madam. Inside the unbag you will find a small lace hanky which has never been used. Therefore, she must wipe her nose upon her sleeve. Also, a newspaper clipping containing two advertisements. One for outsized corsets and the other pledging relief for earlier sufferers. Deduction, she is fat, her husband wears a truss. Why bold? The comb, madame. There is no comb. Exactly. Demont. Who but a bald woman would neglect to carry a comb on her person? As for the name Hyde, it is embossed upon the handbag itself, along with her Christian names, Genuine and Cow. But wait. I detect a foot outside the door. We are the visitor. Oh, Monsieur Poirot, I almost fell over this foot outside the door. Pray be seated, mademoiselle. Oh, you found my bag. Oh, this is your handbag. Oh, Miss Marbles, you must help me. I'm at my wit's end. <laughs> Have a sip of this brandy, my dear. Tell us all about it. It's, um, a 1933 Armagnac. <laughs> Great. Now tell us about the case. My name is Agnes Pomfret. 
My father was Colonel Joshua Pumfret, who retired six years ago to take up beekeeping in Oswestry. Yes, the speck of grit in your left ear lobe told me that much. Pray stick to the point. Well, yesterday morning we found father dead on the floor. It appeared to be suicide. The gun was still in his hand. The door and all the windows were still locked from the inside. This press clipping gives most of the details. Outsized corsets. <laughs> and yet there is something about this case that no one could explain, Monsieur Poirot. Why, before killing himself, would my father shoot his own teddy bear? The bullet was still in his chest. It's almost as if someone murdered my father and then shot the teddy bear because it was a witness. To make sure that he did not squeal. <laughs> teddy bears don't squeal. They squeal. <laughs> Spare me the zoological details, please, Mrs. Marbles. This case intrigues me. There is no time to lose. Pack yourself a spare toothbrush and some knitting needles. We must leave at once. Uh, don't forget to uh, hand back. Oh, no. It belonged to my great aunt in Beckentry. Oh, I came from Beckentry. Oh, perhaps you knew her. A bald, fat woman named Hyde. She wiped her nose on her sleeve, and was under a truss. <laughs> Mrs. Tremble, this is Mr. Poirot, the famous detective. Oh, Mr. Poirot, you're much thinner than I imagined. May I take it? The woman is obviously a myopic idiot. She's talking to the hat stand. <laughs> Pray conduct me to the scene of the tragedy, Miss Pomfret. Pomfret. As you wish. <laughs> Tell me, mademoiselle, uh, did he always sleep in this position? He usually slept in the bed, Monsieur Poirot. <laughs> Hello, what have we here? A cigarette that has singed a hole in the sheet. How careless some people can be. Smoking in bed is a very dangerous occupation. I knew a woman once. Or was it twice? But that's another story. We were very lucky that the whole bed did not simply burst into flames. <laughs> Most interesting, and that, I presume, is the teddy bear. Mm -hmm. And the bullet is still here in his chest. Mm. Tell me, madame, you see a deep groove across the bottom with a small round hole in it. <laughs> What's your misplay? No, the bullet, madame, the bullet. <laughs> yes, this was fired from the same gun. There is devilry here. Miss Mipple. <laughs> My dear young man, I observe from this toenail clipping I found upon the carpet that you are a rugby player, no? Good Lord, how on earth can you possibly deduce that? <laughs> uh, it is nothing. In fact, you are an all-round sportsman, yes? Yeah? Well, I like to keep fit, monsieur. <laughs> of course. Do you mind if I try, monsieur Pomfret? Pomfret. Gesundheit. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pomfret, can you think of anyone at all who might have wanted to murder your father? Well, there's myself, of course. Agnes, cousin Sidney, Auntie Gladys, and Uncle Wilf, Mr. Widgeon from the post office, old Mrs. Cartwright. Uh, yes, yes. I take it he was not a popular man. <laughs> we must be going now. Come on, Mr. Poirot. Don't dawdle. <laughs> Everyone has their ups and downs. Madame Tremble, I want you to take this gun and empty all the chambers into my heart. 
Empty all the chambers. Are you mad? Make a terrible mess. <laughs> you just stop this room. Pray, Madame Tremble, do as I ask you. Madame Tremble, your aim was so bad that at first you shoot the teddy bear by mistake before callously killing your own employer, Colonel Joshua Pumfrit. Pumfrit? Yes, him. How did you get out of the room and lock the door from the inside? And, and why did none of us hear any gunshots? There is a perfectly simple answer to that. If only I knew what it was. <laughs> I think I can help, Mr. Poirot. As I think. I have worked out exactly how this bizarre crime was committed. Oh, I say this won't take too long, will it? Mm, I've got two vaulting horses and a trampoline being delivered at four. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, with your indulgence, I should like to take you back now to the night of the crime. Having locked the door and all the windows, Colonel Pumphrey thought he was safe. But he was wrong, for the assassin was already in the room. Concealed in a secret compartment underneath the bed. The murderer waited until the time was right and then fired the gun up through the mattress so as to muffle the sound. <laughs> but what the murderer didn't know was that the bullet had gone right through the victim's body and embedded itself in the teddy bear. It was then that the murderer emerged into the room. Yes, Mr. Poirot, it was you. You were the murderer. You put the gun in Pumfret's hand to make it look like suicide. Then you lay the teddy bear over the edge of the bed and place the cigarette end over the charred bullet hole so no one would suspect what had happened. Then you climbed back inside the bed and remained hidden in the room until the coast was clear the following morning. But how did the secret compartment get there? The man who sold you this bed, did he look like this? The white-bearded salesman? Yes. Mr. Poirot in one of his many uncanny disguises. Curse you, Mrs. Marbles. <laughs> yes, it was I, me, moi. I was so bored that I did it to prove I could commit the perfect crime. Now I am ruined. <laughs> but you will never take me alive. You understand? No one will ever take me alive! Goodness gracious. Mr. Pumphrey, we've left your new trampoline outside in the yard. Is that all right? <laughs> Never mind, Mr. Poirot. As I said before, everyone has their ups and downs. <laughs> 